But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor, favor in the eyes of the prison warder. So the warder put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warder paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care, because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Some time later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the same prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. After they had been in custody for some time, each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, in my dream, I saw a vine in front of me and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said to him. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. And you, will be, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to do when you were his cup bearer. But when all goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. I was forcibly carried off from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing to deserve being put in a dungeon. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given a favorable interpretation, he said to Joseph, I too had a dream. On my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is what it means, Joseph said. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and impale your body on a pole, and the birds will eat away your flesh. Now the third day was Pharaoh's birthday, and he gave a feast for all his officials. He lifted up the heads of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker in the presence of his officials. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position so that he once again put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had said to him in his interpretation. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. Thanks very much for reading that. That's great. Um, if you need a Bible, by the way, there are some at the outside that you can grab hold of, or you can download an app, put it on your phone, which most people are doing. I, I, there aren't any Olympic scores to look at. Um, so I, I take it people are looking at their Bibles. And um, we, we do believe that God speaks to us um, through his word, that he's revealed um, himself through his word and through um, the whole of the Bible. And we're at the beginning of the Bible, the book of Genesis, which means beginnings. And um, the title of our service is Dreams in Prison or Dreams in the Darkness. And of course, the whole story of Joseph is framed by his dreams. Um, Joseph had some dreams that even, even though he was the second youngest in his family of, of 12 brothers, um, he, he would actually be the savior of his family and, and his family would bow down to him. 
Now then, let me show you a, a picture from the Olympics because I've been isolating for 10 days. This is the first day out today. We've had some COVID in the family, Anne and Lois, and Joe, who had camp, couldn't come home, and so he, he had his first night at home last night. Um, so he was grateful to be, and he slept till 12 o'clock this morning. But anyway, we've been watching the Olympics, and I, th I think our first gold medal was won by um, Tom, Tom Daly, who uh, learnt uh, some of his diving here in Southampton, and his synchronized diving partner, Matty Lee. Now, Tom Daly is the same age as Joseph was in jail, 28 years old. We know that because the next chapter says Joseph was 30 years old when he um, became prime minister of Egypt after his interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. And Tom Daly, when he received the gold medal, uh, I don't know if you saw the interview, said, I've been diving for 20 years. It started uh, as an eight-year-old. Um, he, he, he entered the Olympics when he was only 14, Britain's youngest athlete then. Oh, there's a skateboarder who won a bronze this year, uh, Sky something. Um, but anyway, um, he'd been diving for 20 years, and I guess in lockdown last year, he thought that maybe he would never win a gold medal, that the dreams would not come true. Um, but, but he did. A couple of Mondays ago, he won the gold medal. He had to wait a long time, just like Joseph. And of course, the England football team are still waiting for their dreams, right? You know, I love that song. What is it now? 50 years of her, never stop me dreaming. Three lines on a shirt. I like singing that, even though I'm Welsh. Um, I wonder if we'll sing it in 2050. You know, 90 years of hurt, never stop me dreaming. Well, it seemed like uh, Joseph had never stopped dreaming that the prophecies that the Lord had given him would actually come true. But he'd have been dreaming night after night. Lord, how is this going to happen? The word success, though, is written over Joseph's life at the beginning of our reading. Actually, in chapter 39, the phrase that keeps coming up right throughout chapter 29, 39, is the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph, even in the pit. And that's a really important backdrop as we look at chapter 40 now, where we're going to see three dreams. We're going to look at Joseph's dreams carrying on and also the dreams of the cupbearer, um, and the baker. So um, at this point in Joseph's life, as he's in jail because he's been falsely accused of, of doing something with Potiphar's wife that he didn't do, um, two high-profile prisoners come into jail, a royal cupbearer and a baker. We've got an animation to, to show you while I'm talking here. Now, the, the cupbearer and the baker were responsible for Pharaoh's food and drink. Very important jobs because they stopped Pharaoh getting poisoned. And while Joseph was still dreaming that God was going to raise him from the pit, the two prisoners have these dreams that come true straight away. Verse 8 says to us, When Joseph came to the baker and the cupbearer one morning, their faces were downcast, and they said, we've had dreams, but there's no one to interpret them. Joseph said, well, tell your dreams to me, because interpretations belong to the Lord. Tell your dreams to me. He, so he, clearly, he was still trusting that the Lord would also make his dreams come true as well, but in God's time and in God's way. Joseph was saying that all the events of the past, present, and the future are in God's hands because he's eternal. He's the God of the past, present, and the future. So let's have a look at these dreams. You can see one here. Um, a three-branched vine had appeared. It had produced buds. It had produced uh, blossoms and then grapes. And they were plucked by the cupbearer and um, he put the cup in Pharaoh's hands. And the interpretation was easy and nice. Uh, the branches are three days said Joseph, and in three days, Pharaoh will lift up your downcast head and he will restore you and you'll place the cup in Pharaoh's hand again, like you did before. Happy days in three days. Oh, but Joseph said, please remember me when you're restored to your position. I shouldn't be here in this pit. Sure, Joseph, he said, how could I ever forget you? 
And then we have the baker's dream. Now, it seemed like the baker had maybe been holding back, um, perhaps for good reason, I, I, I don't know. But when he saw that the cupbearer had been given a positive interpretation, he came forward and he said, well, I, I've also been dreaming. And um, in my dream, there were three cake baskets on my head. And uh, in the top one, there were loads of, of baked goods for Pharaoh, but birds were eating out of the baskets on my head. Now, in the Egyptian dictionary, there are 38 different kinds of cake and 57 different types of bread. So this basket would have been massive, all these wonderful baked goods, but the birds were eating them. And Joseph said, this is the interpretation, I'm afraid. Pharaoh will also lift your head off of you and impale you on a tree, and the birds of the air will eat your flesh. In three days, this is going to happen not happy days in three days. And then at the end of the chapter, verses 20 to 23, we see the dreams come true. The cupbearer is restored and the baker is hanged. And at the same time, Joseph is clearly waiting because you look at the last line of the text that we read and it says the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. The chief cupbearer forgot Joseph. I'm sure Joseph's last words would have been, hey, royal cupbearer, God bless you. Remember me. Remember me when you're restored to Pharaoh's service. Sure, Joseph. Amazing that you can interpret dreams. How could I ever forget you? But he did. And Joseph had to wait two more years in jail until Pharaoh had a dream, which we'll look at next week. But I wonder if Joseph was reflecting in those two years as he dreamed on of being rescued from the pit, still in his cell, about the world of evil that had come down on him. This is the story of Joseph, the favoritism of his dad, which had turned his brothers against him. The envy of his brothers, their jealousy, which had led to them beating him up, and leaving him for dead in a pit. The immense cruelty of the slave traders who sold people like pieces of meat for a living and who'd, who'd done that to Joseph and he'd been brought into Egypt and then he had been successful in the house of Potiphar and then Mrs. Potiphar had uh, also envied him and lusted after him and um, told lies about him so that he was imprisoned again, even though her husband, I'm sure, didn't believe Mrs. Potiphar. Um, and so the whole world of evil had come down on Joseph, the weakness and injustice of Mr. Potiphar, the lust and lies of Mrs. Potiphar, the cruelty, envy of the brothers, the favoritism of the dad, cruelty of the slave traders, and now the selfishness of the blimmin' cupbearer who forgot him. A world of evil. But folks, the, that world of cruelty and evil and selfishness is not just out there, it's in here. This is the message of the Bible, that all the cruelty, all the lust, all the lies, all the injustice, all the selfishness, all the favoritism is in here. It's in me and it's in you and it condemns me. Because God, who we've sung about tonight, is holy and perfect. He's the exact opposite of those things. Compassionate and gracious, loving, faithful. He's the opposite of, of the world of evil that had come down on Joseph. And so when those things exist in us, it separates us from God. And folks, we need a greater Joseph to come and take it away. Or we are condemned in the sight of God. How can it be taken away? Who is this greater Joseph? Well, this is the story of the whole Bible, that a greater Joseph has come to fulfill all the dreams of the world. Because the, uh, almost the whole story of what we call the Old Testament, the, the first two-thirds of the Bible, is about dreams 
of a greater Joseph, a beloved son who would step into our pit and take away the evil that is in here and in our world, a prophet, priest, king who would forgive instead of retaliate, who even though he was ill-treated himself would think of others and serve others like Joseph did in the cell. Joseph's grandpa was called Abraham. The name means big daddy, father of many nations. And, and Abraham dreamed of this greater Joseph blessing the children of the world. Jacob, uh, Joseph's dad was called Jace, Jace, Jacob, Jacob. And Jacob had a dream of a ladder going up from earth to heaven and angels on the ladder, a, a bridge between humans in their cruelty and lies and lust and injustice and a holy God, a bridge. He dreamed about this greater Joseph coming as well. David sang about him. Daniel dreamed about him, all in very dark times when the world was very cruel. And people who had these dreams and glimpses into the future in the Bible are called prophets. And the message of the prophets was that, that God rules that he is king of the future, and that he's got a plan to rescue people. And most people, of course, didn't believe these prophets, and they didn't believe these dreams, and they didn't share these aspirations. And so the prophets in the Old Testament were generally persecuted. But what they dreamed of was a greater Joseph, who would also be this beloved son, but who would also be betrayed and forsaken, and yet who would forgive those who harmed him, Jesus' words on the cross, some of the last, Father, forgive them. They don't know what he, that they are doing. This greater Joseph also was a Hebrew like Joseph. He also went into Egypt like Joseph as a refugee. Like Joseph, he was despised and rejected. In the words of Isaiah, a man of sorrows and acquainted with suffering because he was going to bear the evil of the whole world. Like Joseph, Jesus was rejected and ill-treated and betrayed by those closest to him. Many people were envious of Jesus and jealous of Jesus just as they had been of Joseph. Jesus was also given up in exchange for the price of a slave. Joseph had been sold for 20 shekels of silver. Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He was also stripped and beaten and accused of crimes that he didn't commit. But he wasn't just thrown into a, a pit or a prison. He was killed and thrown into a grave. And as he was killed on the cross, this is what the cross is all about. All the lust and the lies and the cruelty and the favoritism and the selfishness that is in me and in you was placed on Jesus there on the cross. He was killed by the Romans, but it was our sin that nailed him there. And the sky went black, and hell was unleashed on Jesus. And he endured the separation of a holy God, which is what we all deserve. And all the sin and the selfishness in the world was absorbed by him, and he sucked it out. And it went with him to the grave, and he rose again. And in him, all God's promises and all the dreams of the prophets who've ever dreamed came true. Because God rules and God cares, and he has a plan to rescue the world. Jesus came out of the pit. He rolled the stone away, not so he could get out, but so that we can get in. And Jesus saves his people not by just providing food for them, but by absorbing their sins in his body on the tree. He is the greater Joseph who fulfills all the dreams of the prophets. He is the one who's come out of the pit to save us from death and hell. And now the sun, moon, and the stars, they bow down before him. And one day all of creation will acknowledge that he is Lord to the glory of God, that he is the sin slayer. And he's coming back, this Jesus, this greater Joseph, to deal with all the mess once and for all. Now, it's not just the Bible. All the stories that we love, all the great epics, 
that we love, like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or, or Narnia, they have a story where the prospects seem hopeless. But a hero comes from the pit to raise, to win the day. The dreams of the prophets are inside us all. They form our art here. Deep down, we all know that the world is in bondage and our hearts are in bondage and we're all addicts and we need a hero to come and to fight the rising odds and to fulfill our dreams. And that hero is revealed to us and his name is Jesus. The punchline right at the end of the story of Joseph, if you don't know it, is found in chapter 50, verse 20. You intend it for evil, said Joseph to his brothers when he was reconciled to them at the end. But God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And that means that when bad things happen in our world, God is still at work. God is still with us. We've had some of that this week. My family had COVID and we couldn't do stuff. I couldn't win that tennis tournament that I was going to win. We couldn't see people. I wanted to sing, close every door to me. I'm not, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> but I put some new lyrics which go, close every door to me, give my kids lethargy, force me to lock down and watch the TV. Ping me in quarantine, cancel my holiday. How will I ever gain normality? But seriously, when we feel shackled and imprisoned and humiliated and constrained, God is with us to turn it to good. And the story of Joseph gives us hope on so many levels. And even more seriously, the imprisonment of God's people on false charges still continues today in our world as much as it ever has. I read recently a book called Captive in Iran, uh, which was written in 2013 about two amazing Iranian ladies in their 30s who were imprisoned in Evin Prison, Tehran, just because they were Christians, just because they wanted to live their life for Jesus. They were seen as dirty infidels. They had to sleep on the floor with 40 other prisoners with the lights on every night and gov government propaganda blazing out from the TV, but all they had to do was say, we're not Christians, and they could be immediately released. And here in Southampton, I've met dozens of people now who have just narrowly avoided a similar fate, imprisonment, maybe death. Many Christians all over the world face lashings and death penalties just, just because they love Jesus. Christians fall foul of blasphemy laws around the world, and many experience a living death. Communist countries also are targeting Christians. The church is severely persecuted in China, in Vietnam, in North Korea, of course, Burma, Eritrea, many other places. And Hebrews chapter 13, verse three, says this to us, remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Well, that's an application straight to us. Um, I'd like to do that now, and I'd like to spend some time uh, in prayer uh, for those who are in prison like Joseph was, waiting to be released from the pit. So let's pray. 